NASDAQ up, uh, up 12, and uh, the S&P up 5. I mentioned that. Uh, let's take a quick look at, uh, at, at, <laughs> at Treasury. I got to mention it because Jim tweeted it, and it was one of his great tweets of all times, Kramer, about, about um, Zuckerberg. Um, failed a Turing test. <laughs> well, data would at least answer you, right? Exactly. Yeah. So a Turing test, I had to have it explained. So that's what you, to, 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 developed a to determine yeah. whether it's a machine, it's a machine or, or a human. A human. Yes. And so Mark sort of, I don't know, missed a couple of important questions. <laughs> that's an advantage of his when it comes to navigating certain kinds right. of business challenges. But then when it's time to be a man of the people, it, it can be a challenge. Ooh, fall, fall, falls a little flat. So let's... Uh, so not, thanks for stopping by. you got to probably run to get in the line over there. Is that why you're down here? You Jump know, for we'll talk about that. We'll okay. talk about that. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not running as much as I used to. Oh, Sapien's here, too. What are yes, you, is this, yes. your, is this, did you, are founder of the Flux Group? Yeah, well, cool. someone's got to. Uh, that's yeah. right. And former editor. You were on here a million times as editor-in-chief of Fast Company. And now Flux is a fast company. That's right. All right. That's and right. our own John Fort that uh, we've already been talking about with that. You don't need an introduction. Co-anchor of, uh, of Squawk Alley. And doesn't own a tie, a necktie, I don't think. Well, they're dusty now. <laughs> they're, they're, John, you I broke some funerals. funerals. You, you, funerals you are I paving the way for the rest of us, my friend. I'm trying. Keep, keep it up. All right. So what do you guys want to talk about? I don't know. Maybe Apple. Go what ahead. Do you think maybe Apple. Yeah. I mean, it, isn't it isn't it great to have a have a business where people like will stand in line and cheer so that they can give you their money? <laughs> yeah. Like what what a great what a great position to be in, right? Yeah. To have, media to have and Apple. Like, Those are the businesses where they do that. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all that I can see the cry the mosh pit out there for you. Yeah. You know, right. It, it, no, they're they're, yeah. they're waiting for you. No, but it's it's uh, it, listen to, that Apple can still command these moments. You know, indicates the continuing power and and uh, and relevance really of that brand, right? There's a report that came out this week about the world's most relevant brands and Apple again, you know, number one, the world's most relevant brand, um, even though their business is going through a real sort of strategic inflection point, right? Mm -hmm. Which you, which Tim Cook is navigating. John and I were talking about how much bigger and more complicated Apple is today than the Apple that Steve Jobs ran, right? And how Steve Jobs might uh, might approach might approach things differently. But the, the transition of their business, if you go on Apple's um, site now and you look at the way they're selling the, uh, the iPhone 11, you'll see the prices. It's, um, it's all based on recurring revenue in a way that's completely different from the way they operate before. So the, the main thing that's sold is the monthly price and your trade-in value. It's like you're leasing a car, right? They want you to be buying your Apple and upgrading your, your phone continually. And this is a continuation of what's happening all across their services, whether it's you know, Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus, Apple News Plus, Apple Music, right? The new arcade video service. It's all about getting that recurring revenue to come in so that it can stabilize what is still a growing core business in phones, but growing at a much slower rate than it used to. Uh, and even with all that excitement, they know that. So how do you think the, the, the new launch of the phones this, this morning is going to go off? Like, do you think this is going to be a big uh, growth point for, for the new phones, or, or is it more just a function of the... No, I, no. I mean, it's, it's not going to be a, a growth point. The, the iPhone itself hasn't been growing for the past couple cycles. It's been more about can they make more money selling the same number of phones or fewer phones. And, and I don't think anybody really expects this to be too much of a deviation from that. Although I have to say, the stuff in the ecosystem that they're now going to be start charging for, even though it's only four ninety nine for the TV service, you add on another 5 bucks for the games or something like that, it starts to add up. Like yeah. If they can actually squeeze that much out of their entire ecosystem, and you see an ecosystem that's so jazzed up that they go to stuff like this, I mean, that's yes, If you have a revenue. platform like yeah. they do with all of those customers, why not sell them more products through it, right? right. That's... You asked the question earlier, I think, about sort of the regulatory challenges that could happen. And that, and that may loom there in some ways for Apple, as for, they do for all these tech platforms and certainly for Zuckerberg and Facebook. But if you have that platform, of course you use it, right? And, and you're, you're, uh, you're selling credit cards, right? You're selling games. You're selling everything you can through that, through that platform. Like, why not? Well, the, the iPhone is a once in a lifetime, maybe once in a couple of lifetimes business. And I think that wasn't clear at first. Just you think about a, a product that uh, average selling price starting out was around six or $700, going up from there to 700 plus with the kind of margins that it had, selling in the volumes of millions and millions a quarter, 
We'd never really seen anything like that, and then people were buying a new one every couple of years. And so you know, this store, uh, Fifth Avenue Apple Store, it's the house the iPhone built. So is the new Apple campus. So is Grand Central. So it's all, all these kind of cultural monoliths that a Apple's been able to build. And I think for a while they thought, well, maybe the iPad will be like that. Well, maybe, maybe the watch will be like that. Nothing's been like that. So now they're in this mode of saying, all right, we're going to create ecosystems around the iPhone and these other devices, and, and we'll, we'll see how profitable we can make those. We'll have a branding, a cultural moment, and bring more people in and keep the people who we have, and we'll see where that leads us. And I think this, this is an important moment in that transformation of Apple. Uh, you know, it's been kind of a quiet transformation, but it's important. Th this store that's open 24 hours, yes, it's about selling phones and selling watches, but it's, a, it's about a lot more than that. It's about Apple's brand and keeping people learning and keeping people connected to what Apple's about. Yeah. I mean, you have a, a, you know, a large group of millennials cheering a CEO. <laughs> yes. That might be the last time, maybe the only guy. America's that, technology uh, uncle, as one of my colleagues calls Tim Cook, right? Everyone's friendly uncle. That's, that's the way Tim has positioned himself. That's the way he's trying to position Apple to be trusted in a way that some of the other tech platforms uh, have had more trouble with lately. And events like this allow them to burnish that image and to try to reinforce that. There's it's a few point. more. There's a few more. Bob Iger gets love. Yeah. The, the, love. The, the trust and helps the growth. I mean, healthcare is a potential growth area uh, for the watch and stuff. They have the trust of Americans. That's a, I mean, that's a big avenue for growth. And I, I think, what do you think is the prospects going there for? for well, I, listen, Tim has really leaned into the idea uh, that Apple is different on issues of privacy and security. And as long as Apple lives up to that standard, they'll be able to maintain and, and I think reinforce that level of trust. They have to live up to that standard. They've had some small, you know, bumps along the way and they have to make sure that they don't, you know, run afoul of that because that can go very quickly. The, the most the, important the, device for Apple's ecosystem strategy is the $199 Apple Watch, right? The, the, the series, what is it, series four? Yeah. Uh, that they've now bumped the price down to 199 Now that's kind of, it's almost an impulse buy for a certain uh, demographic of consumer. And what that gets you, if you're Apple, is it gets you volume. It, it hits that certain level that the iPod started to hit when they Just came out with the iPad. When a bigger ecosystem. Yeah, you, with the mini and the nano, and then all of a sudden everybody had the music in their pocket and they can build businesses around it. It'll be interesting to see if that happens. With I, Iger still has the, you know, he's got the Marvel group and the superheroes and the Star Wars. This film, yeah. He's also got Abigail Disney saying that you're way overpaid and the woke left has Iger in their... So, did you forget about that? I didn't forget about that, but nobody's talking about that. I mean, no, nobody's Not talking about Not in the last month, but they were before that. That's what I, it, I was trying to think of other... Culturally, other no, it's, talking it's about not that. Iger. Right. That you want to, well, not when you make Iger 60 million a year. want to take a picture with them. Right. Like it's people who want to take a picture with them. It costs $200 them. Dollars to go to the theme park. It costs $200 to go to... His, his, and that's what yeah. you read about. And they, they pay the... What do they pay the workers? It's all... And you know all go. the... Galaxy's yeah. Edge. Uh, people go and they love it and they dance with... R2-D2 and drink the, what is it, what is it, the blue milk? Um, they have blue and green No, milk. It's, it's the, it's the butterbeer at the really good theme park. Universal. Yes. Oh, is that Universal? That's that Universal. <laughs> it was a coincidence. Owned by Comcast. That, that was a coincidence. all the best things are, right? Coincidence right, that I just mentioned that. Many of the best things. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I, I suggest you get on board here, John. Uh, no, either way. Anyway, uh, thanks, uh, Bob and you, Flux, Mr. Flux, well, how long? Thank you. I'm sorry? How long for oh, Flux? Oh, it's, it's moving and you'll see more of it. Okay, good. When did you found it? A year and a half ago. A year and a half, okay. Year and a half. Wow, where was I? Yeah. yeah.